welcomed the reports which made headlines last week. President Muhammad Buhari on Monday said judicial officers should work towards the creation of special courts to assist in the speedy administration and dispensation of justice in the country. Speaking in Abuja at the All Nigeria Judges Conference, President Buhari said he is aware of the challenges facing the judiciary, over which he has had discussions with the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanku Muhammad. He also lauded the dedication of the judiciary in the timely dispensation of electoral disputes and urged them to do more. The president also said his administration was committed to the economic revival of the country, especially by attracting foreign investment as well as fighting corruption and insecurity. He therefore solicited the support of the judiciary in this regard. The Nigerian Senate on Tuesday passed the second reading of a bill to review some provisions of the Criminal Code Act. The bill to amend the Criminal Code Act Cap C-38 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 was sponsored by Senator Oluremi Tunubu, APC Lagos. The bill, which was first read in the upper chamber on September 24, seeks to amend some portions of the main act. It seeks to delete portions of sections 218 and 221, amend the definition of rape as contained in Section 357, as well as increase punishment for kidnapping in Section 364. Leading the debate, Tinubu said the definition of rape as contained in the main act makes rape be seen as a crime committed against women alone. The criminal court states that a man commits rape when he has had carnal knowledge of a woman against her will, without a consent, or if that consent was gotten by coercion. In the face of the Nigerian law, only women can be raped. The bill also prescribes life sentences for kidnapping. The current section, 364, proffers a punishment of imprisonment for a term of 10 years where a crime of kidnap is established. As defined by the Act, kidnap is unlawful imprisonment of any person to prevent him from applying to a court for his release or from disclosing to any person where he is imprisoned. Another section of the Act that sought amendment is 218, which provides that anyone who has unlawful kind of knowledge of a girl under the age of 13 or attempt same is guilty of a felony and liable to life imprisonment of 14 years imprisonment respectively. On Wednesday, the federal government admitted that its temporary policy to close land borders was responsible for the current rising inflation in the country but they still defended the closure, insisting it would remain in place until the country's neighbors learned to respect trade protocols. The FG said it had to close the borders because Nigeria could not continue to, to subsidize economies of her neighbors. Nigeria had in August closed its land borders on the ground. The smuggling of goods from its neighboring countries was hurting its economy. On November 4, the federal government listed five conditions for reopening the country's land borders. As one of the conditions, the federal government said Nigeria would not accept imported goods that were repackaged by neighboring countries and brought to Nigeria. But since the border closure, headline inflation rose to 11.61% as of October from the 11.24% recorded in September. On Wednesday, Minister of Finance told House correspondent that inflation rose due to hikes in food prices arising from the closure of the borders. She was responding to questions after the Federal Executive Council meeting ended in Abuja. The FEC meeting was presided over by President Mamadou Buhari. However, the minister stated that the border closure was a temporary measure adopted by the government to protect the economy against trade bulk practices by neighboring countries and would be reopened when all of Nigeria's demands were met. Ahmed insisted that the government had little choice but to shut the borders else Nigerians would suffer the economic consequences, especially now that the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement was coming into effect. On his part, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, explained that the gains of the border closure outweighed any other impact it might have caused, adding that Nigeria was subsidizing the rest of West Africa. He argued that the practice of importing goods into neighboring West African countries and repackaging them for Nigeria to look as if they were manufactured in such countries was not healthy for Nigeria's economy. 
On Thursday, President Muhammadu Buhari asked the National Assembly to review and approve the 2016-2018 external borrowing plan. He made a request and letters forwarded to the legislature and read on Thursday on the floors of both chambers of the National Assembly in Abuja. In the letters, the president explained that the request was for specific outstanding project under the 2016-2018 borrowing plan. He explained that the 8th National Assembly approved only a part of the external borrowing request forwarded to it in September 2016. This, according to President Buhari, stalled the federal government implementation of critical projects spanning across the mining, power, health, agricultural, water and educational sectors. The President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, read the letter to lawmakers present in the Senate's chamber. The Ogun State Government on Friday confirmed outbreaks of cholera in the state with five deaths recorded. The state government said it has also commenced intense fumigation of the environment to contain the spread as a highly contagious disease hit four cities in Abelkuta North local government area of the state. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance, Dr. Ade Sonya Ainde, who made this known while addressing reporters in respect of the cholera outbreak, said 12 cases have been reported, with five deaths recorded out of the known cases. Adesonya identified the communities as Abule, Otun, Lafenwa, Kuto, and Kobiti as areas affected by the cholera outbreaks. Even as fumigations have commenced in the cities, in the communities by the officials of the Ministries of Environment and Agriculture, respectively, in order to arrest the spread of disease through killing of the causative organism. The Permanent Secretary also disclosed that of the five fatal cases, one person died in a hospital while four others died in the affected communities, stressing that eight cases were reported from health facilities and four picked in the communities from retrospective case search and confirmed through laboratory tests. 